Dude was probably in his hospital bed watching the game from a bird's eye view with on was. the phone. Arteta got it all wrong. I'm telling you, he's going to have a revitalized end of the season. The ref did not control the game at all. I think it's a three-horse race. Is the title over? With Everton beating Arsenal and Tottenham beating City, where does that leave the title race? All right, we got to talk about City really quickly. Lost to Tottenham, out Spurs Stadium, 1-0. Inevitable at this point. I mean, you know? yeah, it was inevitable because, I mean, this is an annual occurrence. Uh, we cashed in on our... all we, like, when, we, when we came back <laughs> at the Etihad from that, from, from that 2-0, we were basically just delaying the loss to today because, I mean, the annual loss to Tottenham in the league happens every year. Yeah, four. that's four. That's four times in Spurs uh, Stadium. Five, five times, actually. Five times now. No oh, wow. no goals scored in that stadium. So, you know. Horrendous. There was no surprises here today. No surprises. Uh, I mean, I thought it was pretty surprising just because, you know, Conte's form has been, like, dropping massive. I mean, he wasn't even there, so... That there could be the very reason why that they won, but... <laughs> I mean, dude was probably in his hospital bed watching the game from a bird's-eye view with, on was. the phone. Nah, yeah. I stopped that. He was. He We're for sure was. That. He definitely... No. He definitely had, had contact. No, he, he definitely had, had I contact. I don't think he did. He went, dude, come on. He, I don't think he did. Of course anyway, he did. He was watching the game. Bird's Eye View had the advantage over Pep. That's, not, that's the way <laughs> things go. I mean, he had a surgery. This guy's not serious. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. You guys are what now? Six points still? Away? Five. Five, 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 points, five points with a with game, game more played. Oh, my days. That's not good. looking good for you. No, no, no. I mean, at the end of the day... Played Tottenham twice, played United twice, still have to play Arsenal twice, so it's, it's still all there to play for. We'll see. I mean, Arsenal did lose to Everton again at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Sean Dyche, what a beast. That was a massive performance. Arsenal Everton. shocked. What? Don't you mean Burnley? What are you talking about? Burnley beat Arsenal. <laughs> this guy is so dumb. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. That's pretty jokes, though. Dwight Big, McNeil. Assist to Tarkowski. Dwight McNeil to Tar- Tarkowski, bro. That's crazy. I mean, what a shift, though. I mean, the lads put in a shift, you know. Goodison Park was probably the loudest I've ever seen them this entire season, to be fair. So that definitely had a, like an input on the game. You can't tell me otherwise. Like, I'm pretty sure Arsenal haven't won. I think they've lost their last five or something like that at Goodison. Or like they haven't won in their last five at Goodison or some some crazy thing like that. So so it may, perhaps both, both City and Arsenal's lo- losses this weekend were predetermined like this was already i'm telling you football is so predetermined like we know for example cloth the seven year axe is always going to be eminent he's looking like it already he's not gonna get the sack pep never winning at tottenham conte always you know choking like towards the later half of the season Mourinho's third stint third season Season spells like always ends in a disaster. It's a weird sport, bro. It's the script, a weird sport. the script is already written. Script, yeah. The script is the written. Script, yeah, it's definitely written. But you know, the question has to be t- asked. You know, is the title over? Is the title chances over for City? Bro, was it over last week? No, I don't think it was. So why why would it be over this week? It's just one less game. It's one less game. It's still plenty to play for, man. Tottenham lost before you guys played, so City players definitely knew about that. You know, they had everything to play for. They knew that, you know, coming into this Tottenham game, they could be that much closer to first place, and then they choke. So it's not really a definitely choke. playing a confidence. It's, it's not really definitely it's some not, confidence I wouldn't say it's a choke. Uh, I mean, like, at the end of the day, I think Pep got it wrong. Pep was at fault for this game. It has nothing to do with the players, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, I'd probably say the same. Rico Lewis as left back, he was having a nightmare. I mean, it let's, wasn't. It let's was, keep it real. He here. wasn't having a nightmare. I think, I think he that, was having no, a poor, that, very poor game. Ta- Jack no, no, no. no. He, Rico, Rico Lewis didn't put a foot wrong. It was the tactics that were that were wrong. I think Pep told Rico to play, play it. Play, role. play, dude. Stop calling. It's not a fucking Zinchenko role. It's Zinchenko. It's not role. no damn Zinchenko we're role. That at Arsenal right now. Oh my Zinchenko god. Is a real thing. Zinchenko role. Yes. The role that Lam was playing That's, ages ago. The role it. that Dani Alves used to play at Bar. Dani Alves was never that dude. Deep in stop. He would, do that. No, he would do no, that. No, 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 he would do that. He would do that. No, he didn't. Pep not. has been doing this for over a decade. Now suddenly it's the Zinchenko, Zinchenko role. Thing. Give me a break. You know bro. why it's a Zinchenko role? No, I don't want to know why. I don't. I don't know <laughs> why. I don't want to know why. Because he's playing it so well at Arsenal, dude. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm not. We're not talking about this right now. Look, Rico <laughs> Lewis is playing the inverted fullback role um, as he usually does, but I think this was the wrong game to do it. There was so much space out wide for him, and you know, in the midfield was already so so compact, and then no Gundo, no KDB, both of them at the same time is just criminal. 
there's just no chance. It took 83 minutes yep. for Pep to to take that bum Bernardo off the pitch. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I right when he put Gundo and KDB on, you could just tell the whole difference in quality. the difference, because KDB is the only person on the team that knows how to put an early cross into the box. Every single other player wants to just dribble it down to the to the byline and try Who to... Who calling out? Jack Grealish? Calling Jack no, Grealish out right no now? No one specific. It's just mm. like, KDB, for, he's just different gravy. We've been known this for years. He's the only person that knows how to break a line. And he went, as soon as he came in, he was pr- trying his best to put in early crosses into space. Holland was getting closer and clo- closer mm. to the crosses. Closer is a bit of a stretch. He was getting closer he to the crosses. He was the whole game. No, I mean, you, you control, I mean, you control all like, you no, want. You can sh- you control all you want. Holland was, very, was one of our best players in the game. Obviously, he needs to... Now, well, now talking about trolling, what are we talking about? It's, it's completely facts. He didn't even have a touch in the box, mate. What are we talking it's about complete, right now? Bro, he needs service to have touches in the box. Anytime he came and to link up play, he did it superbly. Like, no like, what, issues. One or two times in the game. Multiple, multiple times throughout the game. Julian um, Alvarez is making a much better difference than... than Julian Alvarez. Alvarez was shambolic. That was... It was an embarrassing performance from him. I don't think... He, I don't think him and... Holland can play together because when you cause obviously because so yeah. obviously Holland he needs to be the central striker and I think that's Julian's best position but by far Julian drifting out wide and you know trying to come deep it's not his game at all mm. Grealish was what well, I thought it was pretty good for me it was Pep's fault no Gundo no KDB it took 83 minutes to take Bernardo off the pitch he didn't do anything um, the subs were wrong Mara's off at 58 minutes it was ridiculous for me the loss is on Pep but <laughs> but um. Look, the refereeing in this game, I thought was atrocious. He, I don't think he, he failed. The game, he though, failed. I wouldn't say. Okay, obviously he didn't decide the game. It's, it wasn't any like big calls, penalty, no var checks or anything like that. But like at the end of the day, he played into Spurs' hands. Spurs were constantly fouling for the first twenty to thirty minutes Romero of got the second. The red, rightfully so, bro. <laughs> Spurs were constantly fouling for the first 20, 30 minutes of the second half. Grealish was fouled about ten times. The ref did not control the game at all. It just riled up the crowd. You know, riled up the Spurs players. They kept fouling. You know, repeatedly. No cards were coming out. It you know it played into Spurs' hands. Eventually, yeah, they got the red, but that shit was way overdue. Spurs played well at the end of the day, but despite all that, Spurs played well. I mean, they played played one of their best games of the season. That's no surprise. It's against City. They're always going to turn up. They always do. Don't know why. I guess it's just you know playing the champions brings something out Dude, of you. Stop. I mean, it. it does. It does. At the end of the day, playing the best team in the league is always going to make you want to play a little bit better. I mean, that's just the facts. I think anyone that, who plays football knows that. Well, I think it's just more like Pep's style just fits Conte's style so perfectly. Um, I mean, that definitely plays a part. Like, I agree with that, but at the end of the day, like, it's not like Spurs were creating a million chances and they created uh, an insane chance for their goal. No, at the end of the day, we shot ourselves in the foot. Yeah. Rodri, big mistake. At the end of the day, this weekend was decided on center defensive mids. We could talk about Partey coming off and Jorginho coming on. Agent Jorginho yeah. in that game. Yeah. Rodri, I mean, disaster class. I mean, one, one bad Casemiro mistake. Casemiro getting, you know, ch- choking out, mm-hmm, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Battle the DMs is straight up all this weekend. So, I mean, Jorginho, let's talk about Jorginho really quickly. Hilarious signing. <laughs> um, honestly, when I saw that happening, I got out of my couch and I was just jumping in, in excitement because he's abysmal. Oh, never rated I him. I don't as think he's terrible. He's abysmal. Never rated he's him as a player. Bad. He's a very yeah. much a good role player. He's good enough to play at a club he's, like Chelsea or Arsenal. It was just way, it was such a big like moment in the game to take off Partey, especially the way Onana and uh, Decore were playing that Jorginho definitely couldn't handle it. You could tell that he had like the jitters, like even in the last couple of minutes, like he was making horrendous passes even like five meters away you could just tell like Arteta got it all wrong I mean yeah Partey we know how important he is Arsenal that's no that's no uh you know no new news but like Jorginho signing don't think that's the right signing for Arsenal I I don't think he's good enough if Partey gets injured at the end of the day they signed a backup just in case Partey gets injured and if he gets injured it's wrath for Arsenal because Jorginho cannot do that role he was abysmal against Everton like I said I still think that you know there's a lot of you know games to be played at the at the end of the season, and it's I think the title race is still well and truly on. Yeah, I clearly. think even United has a slight chance. No of chance. Back into it. No chance. The way that they're playing, they're what 15, 13 undefeated at home. 
the way Eric Ten Hag has got them playing, you know, they just got Sancho, which is basically another signing at the end of the How season. is it a new signing? Basically a new signing. How? He's, it's, I'm telling you, he's going to have a revitalized end of the season. Okay. And it's going to look wonderful. We'll Especially see. because Anthony's frauding. But we'll we don't see. have to talk about United. I'm just saying the door is still open for them, you know. I don't a think lot, it is. They, of, they're, they're showing weaknesses. Is Casemiro things, out no, three games now? A lot of things can happen between City and Arsenal. You know, we still have to play those two deciding factor games. And I think if, you know, if both ended a draw and United end up, you know, winning a bunch of their games, I think it's very possible that United can, at the end of the day, snag the Premier League title. <laughs> It's like it's not, it's, there's no chance of that happening. United don't have the quality consistency to keep up for the rest of the season. They're going to get top four. I think that, that's pretty pretty dead cert. Um, yeah. But like, look, so. they're not in a title race, not entertaining that. I'm entertaining. Casemiro, it's, it's three games exciting. out. Three McTominay games is, is going to have to put in a shift. Yeah, I, I think McTominay isn't even playing that horribly. It's pretty well. bad. They've got Sabitzer now as well. He, good signing, I good know signing. he's very defensive as well. He can run the eight. He yeah, can, but he can't. He can't. He can't play in a six, a lone six like. Casemiro. I don't think. I don't think. But they don't play lone eight. They don't play like a a lone six anymore. Mm, I mean, they, they kind of do. Really. They kind of do. Fred was kind of having. Fred that, doesn't play. Fred that, doesn't start. Pivot. Fred doesn't start. He's been starting a lot of games. Fred Erickson, doesn't start. Erickson's injured. Eric. He just got injured. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Literally so just got started. injured. Fred has been starting. Bro, he, Erickson's be been starting. out for like one game. Fred will be. Starting. Erickson's been out for like one game. Bro, it's been Erickson, Fernandez playing an eight, Casemiro alone DM. Sabitzer can't play alone DM. So so to accommodate for that, they'll probably play Fred McTominay more often, make their team weaker. Probably, yeah, I'm not denying that. But I mean, look, United for me are in a title race. They got their 2-1 win against Crystal Palace. <laughs> This guy's so salty. It's it's who's salty? Well, what do I have to be At salty about? At the end of the about? day, I think it's a three-horse race. All right, but yeah, I mean, like five-point gap. One, Arsenal has a game in hand. City and Arsenal do play not the next Premier League game but the game after it's going to be a big one at the Emirates we're going to cover that for sure two horse races in this title race um, this man says three let us know in the comments what you think will happen in that Arsenal and City game at the Emirates and who you think will win the Premier League drop a like subscribe and we'll catch y'all next time peace peace